Specialist Operations. Okay. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks for your attendance. We just wanted to provide some information this morning about a trial that we're going to be conducting over the next uh, 16 weeks of a load-bearing vest. You've already met uh, our two uh, participants here, Sergeant Michael Hearn and Constable Julie Ryan, who are presently trialling the vest. Uh, the vest is going to be trialled at a number of locations across Queensland, both tropical and subtropical, including Mount Isa, Cairns, uh, Rockhampton, Toowoomba, Gold Coast, Sunshine Coast. Basically, uh, as you'll be aware, some of these vests are in use in other police forces around Australia. We found uh, of recent times that the amount of equipment that we're now giving our officers to carry is creating a bit of an issue in terms of space on the uh, utility belt that we uh, provide for them. So it's an issue of both uh, space on the, on the belt and also weight. And with some of our officers who have smaller waist measurements, the space on the belt has become a premium. So we're now trialling the use of uh, a load-bearing vest to see if we can uh, provide a better uh, fit and a better weight-bearing uh, mechanism for our officers. So uh, we'll be trialling, as I said, for the next 16 weeks, after which we'll evaluate. We're going to trial two different sorts of vests. We have got 40 officers who have volunteered to participate in the trial. As you can see, that'll be both male and female officers. At the end of the 16 weeks, we'll do a formal evaluation, which will include uh, some focus group discussions, uh, a questionnaire for the officers who've agreed to participate in the trial, and also a live blog that we will have running with the participants to get their feedback on how they feel the vest is working. So, what are they made out of? Are they, they hot? Do they breathe? Well, there's always an issue when you put any layer of clothing over, there's always going to be an issue with heat, and we're very conscious of that. And that's one of the reasons that we want to trial it all across the state. And while the trial will go over a four month period so that we get uh, access to both the warmer weather and then into the colder months so that the participants can give us some feedback about uh, if there are any heat issues and if so, if they're tolerable. Uh, well, cost is not you know, particularly an issue for us. There's obviously a cost associated with every bit of equipment that we buy with our staff. But can I say the cost will not be the determining factor here. If we find at the end of the trial that they're a worthwhile addition and uh, that they're a good uh, addition to the health and safety of our people, uh, we will be purchasing them. And do you think, um, you know, if you do purchase them at the end, would, would they be a mandatory thing, or could officers wear the belts, or just wait to see how the trial goes? Yeah. Look, we don't have any plans to make them mandatory as such, but if we uh, go down the path of uh, using these uh, pieces of equipment, we'll make them available to all officers who want them. You said that space, uh, that space sorry, is at a premium now, the belts. Why is that? Well, just the range of uh, equipment that we now provide to our staff. You know, we've now got the uh, firearm, taser, uh, a baton, handcuffs, radio, notebook. So all of these things uh, we consider essential for officer safety. We provide them to every officer and we want them to wear them. So uh, obviously with that, uh, to say with the officers who have a smaller waist measurement, it does become an issue of, of space. And you're seeing um, the gun and the taser will stay on the belts? The yes, definitely. From an officer safety and training point of view, we want to ensure that those most serious use of force options remain on the belt. So predominantly what would be? Well, as you can see, uh, some of the equipment that's there, there is uh, handcuffs, there's a radio, there's the baton, and also there's a uh, general purpose uh, pouch on one side which they could use for carrying things like gloves, face masks, those sorts of first aid things, or just for, for uh, any, any particular equipment that they want to carry in that space. Is there any um, problems with restriction of movement, and officers in a scuffle, no. have to draw a firearm? No, uh, the way that uh, the vests have been designed, they, uh, there is no restriction on movement whatsoever, and that's been the reports coming back from the field trial so far, that the officers feel very comfortable with the fit of the garment and the fact that it provides no restriction whatsoever operationally. So in New South Wales Victoria, there's not been one instance where officers said, I got into the scuffle and my range was restricted? Well, we have a, uh, a project that's looking at the interstate comparisons. We have been to the other jurisdictions and spoken to them, uh, got their experiences about uh, the different models that they use and what the experiences have been of their officers on the front line. 
So uh, as far as I'm aware, that has not been an issue, but we'll obviously be conducting our own trials and get the feedback from our own people about whether they see this as a valuable addition to the equipment that we do provide for them. What are the main differences between the two models that are being trialled? Uh, the main difference is that uh, one model essentially comes in a range of standard fittings in a small, large, medium, whereas the other model is individually tailored and measured to the officer. So it's a personal issue, individually tailored. That's the basic difference. Thank okay. So Thank you very much. Uh, sadly, no, no, uh, no good news to report there. Um, there's obviously a very intensive search going on for him, and uh, we're hopeful that that will end well. But at this stage, you know, I have no good news to report. And I guess as each day passes, the Well, you know, um, the circumstances uh, of him leaving the home uh, would suggest that there's, there's no reason to suggest that uh, there's necessarily going to be a bad outcome. Uh, we think he's just left of his own accord and uh, he might want not to return for his own reasons for a while. We hope that he's safe and hidden somewhere, but we obviously have a very uh, significant search underway and we hope that we find him very quickly. Thank you.